Hi, my name is Dr. Namika Chauhan, and today I'm going to talk about negotiation skills. Before I even begin, let me introduce myself. So I have been into business and life skills coaching for more than a decade now. And uh, Magnificent Morning has been one of my pioneer program, which is running Pan India level. Today, I'm here to talk more about how exactly negotiation skills can help us promote our business and also help our fellow people who are involved in our business to grow. So basically we are going to focus on win-win situation. So in order to create a win-win situation in four steps, today I'll teach you what are the first few steps and how to connect with it forward. Communication is central in how we live and this is no brainer. This is something which we all know already. So it's time we should start taking care of our communication skills. Every single time I'm using my communication skill to connect with people, to contact or to even pass on my message. It all depends how beautifully I'm doing it. Yes. So moving on. But if I don't and if I can't expect things to stay in the same way, why? Because like even our five fingers are not same. Same way, even people are not same. So when they think or when they expect that our communications should match up, that is where everybody wants to have their own share of butter. People get wary, people get worried, people get offended if in case they see that they don't have any takeaway in this particular deal or any particular contract which they are discussing. Suppose if a com there is a interview which is going on and I'm there to discuss about my salary. Now while negotiating, which is evident, if I'm not considering my employer's win-win situation versus what I am also going to serve through my experiences, if these things are not matching up, then immediately my chances of getting this job diminishes. So how to improve our negotiation skills? In order to fix not just easy problems, but even to fix our complex problems. Now see, there are certain wisdoms, there are certain ideas which I would like to help you here today. And first of all, let's understand what is negotiation. Now this is a very common cartoon which we all have seen, Tom and Jerry. If you notice in this, these are the main uh, very good cartoon characters who know how exactly to have their win-win situation. Though they keep bugging each other, they keep annoying each other, but at the same time towards the end, they want both the parties to be, to have their own share of fun or happiness or joy. Same way is our negotiation skill. It is not about controlling. Is it, it is not even about diplomatic. It is not even about being that, okay, who is going to get the bigger slice of cheese? It is just about making sure if you are winning, the other party is also winning. So let's understand negotiation by first thing first, that is embracing chaos. And how do we embrace the chaos here? Many a times it happens that we are simply focusing on what is the conversation going about? What is the deal about? What is the offer about? But we are also finding it very less in terms of quality. We feel that, oh, all these things are not necessary to be considered, which is not true. It is also important that actively you participate in any particular deal, any particular conversation which is happening so that you get a fair amount of understanding how to negotiate. Make sure you are giving, giving proper attention to each and every part of the deal which is happening, which is being signed up, okay? Next, I'll give you an example to understand this through a professional life. Now, suppose if there is a deal which is happening about how to get a particular contract, say in my IT field, if suppose if I'm from IT industry and I want to get one particular deal in my favor, but if I don't know how exactly my contribution will help my fellow people who are supposed to take this deal from the other side, other party, then definitely I'm not going to get this negotiation to work in my favor. It is very important that I consider other people's benefit when I'm looking at negotiations, okay, between any contract. Second is learn 
adapt and influence engage but don't indulge we often make a mistake that if i'm negotiating with whenever i'm negotiating with other party i am simply trying to overtake or simply i'm trying to claim that i am better than others so hire me or take my particular contract now this is not the way it is supposed to be done every single time if i am if i want this negotiation to work in my favor i should learn about the person with whom i am going to get engaged with for example in my personal life suppose if i have to negotiate about getting married with someone and if i don't know about the family if i don't know how the culture will be if i don't know what is their living style or lifestyle and if i don't want to understand what and how it is going to um, bring any changes in my life that is where it is going to be a lose or something like where i'm going to lose myself so in my personal life also and it's not just in marriage but also many other decisions that we take with regards to our health for example i may feel that okay i can join a gym for example i can join a gym and i can easily take care of my workout routine but at the same time i am not willing to understand why by joining the gym even the gym owners are getting benefited gym trainers are also getting benefited so i should continue the more and more i am focusing inward okay or just trying to be selfish i might lose on good negotiation skills then comes focus of interest managing uncertainty and understanding what you are negotiating focus of interest should be not purely to win the negotiation or to let the offer work in your favor but focus while talking these uh, these conversations you should know it might happen at any point of time the other party might fall back like for example in our spiritual life now whenever we are negotiating with our say any god we want we are praying for something great to happen in our lives but we always end up offering something which is not equivalent saying that okay suppose if you get me a job my dear god i will get you 10 kg or 5 kg of prashad now is it relevant is it really necessary it is not necessary so again now where should be my focus my focus should be now if i'm getting if i'm praying to get a new job okay my understanding should be that even when i'm continuing with the job my promise should be that i should be able to do a good job not something in giving in return so make sure where your focus is and work accordingly now let's understand the important steps towards negotiation and creating win win situation step number 1 is sense of direction step number 2 is improvising step number 3 is managing the process and step number 4 is mastery now when it comes to sense of direction sense of direction also leads to listening carefully talking less and remaining persistent so why this is step number 1 see god has given us the order of sense and that is how exactly we should be taking care of so when we are making taking sense of any communication first is we have to think then comes our eyes that is vision then comes ears and then comes smell and this is how exactly we should take care of our order of sense while communicating so make sure you are listening carefully you are talking less and you remain persistent on the offer that you are making it will help you to get your side stronger old style used to be accept the offer or reject the offer but the new style is you accept the offer or you should have a counter offer in which you either improve the order offer hold firm or you pull back the offer see i'll give you an example of series very famous series like shark tank over there many entrepreneurs come they try to pitch their business ideas to the sharks who are ready to contribute or take some share in their business in return of certain money that they will invest many a times you will notice all these new entrepreneurs they are uh, keeping themselves ready with the counter offer which could be improving it holding firm or pulling off this is a new style of negotiating so you should take care of this state 
Then comes, uh, for example, I'll give you some example of say, if I have to buy a burger from Magdi. In McDonald's, when I go to buy a burger, they will always come with packages. Either I, even if I want to eat just burger, but the package is such that I get tempted to buy the French fries as well as Coke or maybe something extra, which I never thought that I want to eat. So Magdi example or a fast food chain examples, they always come up with certain packages just to make sure that they have a counter offer or they will make you feel like that if you are not buying their menu in the package that the way they are offering, you feel that you have lost something. So be smart over there. Step number two, improvising. Use of presence of mind. Don't get paralyzed. See, many a times it happens, we start taking things personally. We should remember to stay thick skin. If any comment is being passed on you, it doesn't mean that you have to take it personally and get offended. Improvise yourself. Use your presence of mind so that you know exactly which right word to use. Use Bhatna, that is the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Bhatna is one of the most famous technique while negotiating with your other counterparty. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of Bhatna here? The best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Always in your mind, go with three options. If not A or B, C should work. You must have an alternative in your mind when you're going for negotiation. Then comes establish relationship first. This is one of the most important step to be followed when you're negotiating. If you don't have a good, if you don't follow a good rapport or a relationship with the other party, they will simply feel that you're here only to make money, which should not be the takeaway or the perception they should create in their mind about you. So you must focus on establishing the relationship first so they will remember you forever and perhaps they might come back and also accept your offer. Using other parties information to tweak the deal is one of the most common step, but also a very, very strong step, which people follow when they want to have win-win situation. So improvise your offer by making sure you have done enough of homework on people with whom you are going, with whom uh, we are going to negotiate, okay? Third step is managing the process. Know your own hot buttons, which are the things that will create some kind of turbulence in your peace of mind. So you should know what are your hot buttons, which are your weak areas that if I press it, you will get agitated and you might uh, give in with the negotiating agreements. Be emotionally prepared to negotiate. Don't think that whatever offer you will make, nobody will counter counter it or nobody will uh, disapprove it. So be emotionally prepared. People are there to negotiate with you. Third one is have a plan B. Like I said, you must have plan A, B or even C in your mind ready if the negotiation terms you think may not be approved in first go. Also, while managing the process of negotiation skills, think like a competitor, be multilingual and always aim at getting closed. Many a times while negotiating, it happens. We are only thinking about ourselves. We are not putting ourselves into other people's shoes. That is one of the common mistake we do. So be smart and don't do this particular mistake again. Be multilingual so that your rapport is getting better. Suppose if I'm a person who is from South and if I'm going to have a meeting with a North Indian person, I should be comfortable using both the language, English and Hindi. Third one is always aim at getting closed. Whatever negotiation you are discussing about, your idea should be to come closer to the agreement and not going differently. So always make sure your selection of words are smarter over there. Next comes be proactive. Don't any, uh, not even once give this kind of feeling that you are not comfortable or you are not interested in this negotiation. If you give out this in this particular body language that you're not interested, definitely the other party will not be ready to sign up with you. Next is develop an appreciative mindset. Many a times we forget this part. Why being appreciative? The moment I give you an appreciation, you start liking me. So after that, whatever I tell you, definitely you will give it a thought to consider. So always have an appreciative mindset. Under managing the process, 
practice ooda loop that is observe orient decide and act when you practice this ooda loop everything falls in a proper structure and your terms and conditions are fully welcomed by the other counterparty so make sure you are observing what they are saying they are interested in what you are offering and you are able to help them take a decision and act upon it give them a proper hand holding experience next the fourth step is mastery in order to develop your negotiation skills begin with an eye to how you want to finish always go with a mental movie where you see yourself how exactly you will conclude the meeting so that when you are doing and sitting in the meeting you don't feel as something new is going to happen or you don't get any nervousness at that point of time use opening moments by framing issues why we should negotiate the other party should know they are going they are missing out on something which you have to offer so they will start understanding why they you both have come together and why you both are negotiating on certain terms and conditions third is don't rush don't be in a hurry to conclude the meeting also avoid small i battle that will cost you word never be in a hurry to make perceptions or form perceptions and then holding on to it because those small small battles will actually create a lot of turbulence in your professional relation or even personal relation second use posture to beat to beat stress and building confidence don't sit like this always have an open arms and open eye discussion look into the eye of the person so they will believe in you to what you are offering be realistic don't beat around the bush always talk facts remember your actions define your character which is very very evident here comes the triangle of negotiation towards the end your baselines their baselines and outside constraints now what is outside constraints for example if there is a situation i want to discuss about my salary now if my baseline is i'm looking at a job which is very adventurous and at the same time the company also prefers people who are keen on adventure now suppose if the outside constraint is that they cannot hire more than two people or there are but then there are 10 people who have applied for the same job now how will you negotiate how will you prove that you are the best and the right suitable candidate for this particular post simply by understanding what is their baselines so that you can connect yourself build a rapport and get the job offer in your hand managing uncertainty should be the cornerstone of your negotiation strategy always remember if in case you feel that okay things are not working out at that point of time remember you have the power to let the boat sail in your favor so do not feel that okay you are missing out and somebody else will grab this opportunity uncertainties are bound to happen and it is absolutely fine thank you so much and i hope you were helped by understanding how the negotiation skills needs to be taken care